Hello everybody, it's Penny Shelton here, and today is Friday. You know what that means, another episode of Foodie Friday. So it's the first weekend in November, and here in Tulsa, it started to get really cool. As a matter of fact, tonight they are predicting that we'll have our first official freeze. So it's supposed to be down around 32 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. So I thought this would be the perfect episode to whip out my raw chili night recipe for you all. And so this recipe that I'm going to be making today has not been published in any of my material. This is sort of a new... Uh, it's, it's a new raw chili recipe, so we'll try it together and see what we think. I'm also going to be making corn fritters, and that recipe you can find in the newest released ebook, Raw for the Holidays. And so I'm excited. I've already started prepping some things in the raw food kitchen, so let's go in there and check it out. Okay, let's look at the ingredients for the corn fritters. The recipe calls for three cups of fresh corn kernels. I couldn't find fresh corn, so this is basically just unthawed frozen organic corn. So it's about three cups, which is typically about a package that you would get in the freezer section. That's about what three cups ends up equaling. The recipe also calls for one cup of onion. Well, I'm going to use a leek. I just The leeks looked really good, and there was a special, so I'm just going to shred this up real fine, and we're going to mix it in with a half of a cup of dried almond pulp. This is from making an almond milk. And I just took the pulp, dried it in the dehydrator, and blended it in my Vitamix into flour. I've got a third of a cup of golden flax meal. And I love this product. I've been using this. I ordered this through Navitas Naturals. It's sprouted flax powder. And I do keep this in the refrigerator because um, flax, once it's ground, it can go rancid, but I've just been real happy with that flax powder, and so this is what it looks like. It's golden. The recipe does not call for a jalapeno, but you know we like it spicy around here, so I'm going to dice that up and add it to the mix. Um, we're going to do just a little drizzling of organic cold-pressed olive oil. The recipe calls for maple syrup, but I'm going to substitute my all-raw, low-glycemic coconut nectar. You know, I'm pretty obsessed with Coconut Secret products. Yeah, I've been talking about them a lot lately. Love them. Uh, a tiny bit of freshly cracked pepper and a generous pinch of sea salt. So let's blend all this up. Actually, what I'm going to do is blend everything, except I'm going to hold back about a third of a cup of the corn, and we're going to add that into the mixture whole. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, I've added everything except the dry ingredients. I have left out the almond pulp and the golden flax meal. I have added everything else into the food processor. So we're getting ready to blend this into a batter. We're going to want it to be fully combined and really smooth. And then once that happens, we're going to add the dry ingredients. Then I will put it into a bowl and add what I've left behind as the whole corn. Okay, now I wanted to mention that I added something else that's not in the recipe. I put um, just under a teaspoon of dehydrated garlic powder into the mix. I just think the combination of that, you can see that dark, that's the coconut nectar. So the sweet and the savory together, this should be really delicious. And that little jalapeno is going to give it just a little bit of a kick. Okay, this batter is absolutely delicious. I just did a little taste test. And it has everything that I wanted, savory and sweet. It has a great texture. I wish I had a third hand so that I could show you this next step, but I'll just tell you that I have a small um, cookie dough or ice cream scooper that I'm going to fill up, and I'm just going to take one scoop each and just plop them out on the dehydrator trays to make little fritters. Then we're going to put them into the dehydrator for a couple of hours just to really get them nice and firm, but they can still be soft in the center. So I'll show you that next. Okay, here are the fritters ready to go into the dehydrator. You can see that it made about a tray and a half, and um, the smaller these are and the thinner they are, the quicker they're going to dehydrate, obviously. I've got some non-stick backing that I put over the mesh trays and I just scooped them out, flattened them down a little bit with my hands. My little trick that I do 
is that I will put these in a dehydrator set at 135 degrees, which that's the highest setting on my dehydrator. And I will dry them for about 45 minutes at 135. Don't worry, the internal temperature of the food will not rise above 115 degrees, So, um, but it does expedite your processing and drying time to start it off that way. And then after about 45 minutes, I turn it down to 115 degrees. We'll continue to dry these for about another hour, hour and a half. Then they'll be firm enough that I can peel them easily off of these, um, the backing, and I'll finish drying them for a couple more hours just right on that mesh screen. So these are gonna be great and they're gonna go perfect with our raw chili. Okay, while the corn fritters are busy dehydrating, I wanna show you all the ingredients that I've pulled out and put on my countertop for this delicious raw chili that we're going to make today. Let's see what we've got. Okay, I am gonna use mushrooms as part of the base of this chili as opposed to meat, obviously. Some people in their raw chili like to use sprouted beans like sprouted lentils or chickpeas. I've done that, but um, I just think the mushroom will be really delicious for what I wanna do here. Um, you could also do ground almonds. That works well, I've done that before. I'm going to chop up, very finely chop, these two red bell peppers. I'm going to grate one carrot. I've got a couple of cups of corn. I would have preferred, again, to have fresh, but this is thawed out organic corn from Whole Foods. Um, I'll obviously use a little bit of cilantro, just a little bit of that. I just went out into my garden this morning and I harvested what is left off of a couple of tomato plants that I still had going back there because if we do get that freeze tonight, they're gonna to be history. So might as well use them while I've got them. So we've got tomatoes that I will be blending up as part of the base of the chili. But the main thing that's really gonna make this dish come to life and be delicious are the spices, which I have got plenty of here. Um, first, let's talk for a minute about onion and garlic. I love fresh onion and garlic, but in raw recipes, for some reason, the older I have gotten, the less it loves me. What I have found is sometimes I will substitute the real thing for the dehydrated version, dried ground garlic, which this is just something that my dad actually made. He had an overabundance of garlic last year in his garden, and he dehydrated it, and I just ground it up in the Vitamix. So I've got a ton of dried garlic. So that's what I'm gonna use instead of the fresh. And then I also think, what did I do with it over here? I am going to use onion powder instead of real onion. I don't seem to have the same kind of indigestion when I use this. So you can do whatever you want, but that's just what I'm gonna do for this recipe. Um, I also have cumin, which is in almost every chili recipe. I have the obvious chili powder that I've pulled out. I've got cinnamon. We're gonna use a little bit of cinnamon, chipotle powder or pepper, um, a little bit of oregano. You already saw the flash of the cacao powder. I will use a little bit of this just to create that, um, a little bit of a mole type flavor. And then a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. Instead of using this sea salt, I have some smoked, applewood smoked sea salt. And that's gonna give it a nice smoky flavor along with a little bit of my smoky paprika. And I buy these spices. Um, we have a local spice um, company here and I love to get my spices from them. They have a booth at the Cherry Street Farmer's Market. So I'm just about out of that smoked paprika. I'll also do a little drizzling of that coconut nectar from Coconut Secret. Um, it really does add a nice flavor to the chili. So I'm just gonna wing this as we go and I'll just show you little clips as I'm putting it together. Okay, I've prepped all the ingredients for the chili. Let me just kind of walk you through real quick what I plan to do with this. Um, one thing I didn't mention is I pulled out um, just under a cup of sun-dried tomatoes and I'm soaking them to reconstitute them. I think that this will add a nice richness and depth to the base of the chili. I've pulsed in my food processor four cups of fresh tomatoes, hand chopped two red bell peppers, grated one carrot. There's the 16 ounces of baby bellow mushrooms chopped. You already saw the corn, about a fourth of a cup of fresh cilantro, two small jalapenos, or you could use one, or you could omit it altogether if you don't like it spicy. And then I have portioned out the spices that I plan to use. And again, just like always, the um, 
percentages of the ingredients will be listed underneath this video. I'm also going to add in, I didn't mention, a tablespoon or two of apple cider vinegar to the mix. So what my plan is, is I'm going to blend a portion of these ingredients and then I'm going to leave another portion of these ingredients chunky. So I want it to be just like real chili, like there's going to be a rich broth and with all the ingredients in it. I'll blend all of the sun-dried tomatoes, about half of the regular tomatoes, maybe about half of the red bell pepper, probably all of the carrot I will blend, half of, yeah, half of the mushrooms. I, I will put this in by itself. I won't blend that in. Um, the corn, I may blend, oh, maybe a fourth of that corn in. And then the jalapeno, I will add about half of that to my blender. So let's do that and we'll see how it looks. I want you to get a visual of how this should look. So there, here are the ingredients I've just added. As you can see, all of this, including all the spices, into the blender. I plan on reserving this soak water from the sun-dried tomatoes if I need to add water. But most of these vegetables have a pretty high water content, so we shouldn't have a hard time blending them up. But I wanted you to just see what's left over, uh, about the percentages that I've left behind of the red bell pepper, a little bit of jalapeno, um, cilantro, corn, about half of the tomato, and a good amount of that meaty looking mushroom. So we're going to go ahead and blend it. Oh, it's turned out really great. So you're going to want to get a large bowl. And you can see how thick that is. Now, I would encourage you not to add any more water than necessary. See, it's not coming out. I'm going to have to get a spatula and really work it out of there. The reason I don't want you to add much more water than that is because, as you can see, we're going to mix in the tomato. And mushroom has a tendency to get a little bit watery. So we just don't want to get it too watered down. So let me go ahead and scrape this out. Then we'll add the other ingredients so you can see the finished chili. Well, not to sound dramatic, but I have to tell you that this is the best chili I've ever tasted. Um, and it could be just a combination of the spices with the ingredients. I don't really know, but I did do something different that I need to tell you about when I was off camera. When I blended the chopped ingredients with the blended base, when I put it together to make the actual finished chili, it seemed really too chunky to me. It just seemed overpowering very very chunky which some people like that but I like it a little bit more pureed so I took about three or four cups out of this chili put it back into the blender and I mean you can kind of see the consistency there's definitely still chunky pieces in there um, of mushroom and corn and tomato I mean it's it's plenty chunky so you guys just really have to play with the recipe what I will do now is I'm going to put this into an airtight container and store it in the refrigerator for a couple of hours because just like with cooked chili it's always a little bit better after it has set up for a little while so um, by the time that this is ready my corn fritters will be ready and then I'll be back in just a minute to show you the final finished product I have to say that the big raw chili nut looks like it's gonna be a big success these corn fritters are awesome. They could probably use another hour in the dehydrator. They've been in there about two and a half hours. And here's the chili. Now you can top it with anything you like. I just put some things together. Um, I've got some cilantro, freshly cut Kalamata olives, red onion. I have some living sour cream, which I made recently on one of my Foodie Friday episodes. And then I always like fresh lime squeezed onto my chili. I would prefer to have had some fresh avocado slices. That's always refreshing, but cut into my avocado. Don't you hate when that happens? You're like, I had big plans for that $2.49 avocado. Oh, well. It'll be just delicious, perfect, and wonderful like it is. Can't wait to try it. Well, I want to thank you for hanging with me during this episode as I sort of had fun in the kitchen and played with putting ingredients together. I can't wait for you to try this yourself and I want to encourage you to make it the way that you like it if you like it hot and spicy you know what to do if you like it more mild then certainly you need to omit all of those and, things and I'm gonna go in the kitchen and finish off that bowl of chili I'll see you guys next week bye